Well, hello everybody and thank you for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. In today's video, I'm going to make a simple December daily for myself. I've made one every year for the last couple of years and today is, I believe, the 30th of November. So I am running really late and actually this is going to air in uh, the first week of December, the first Monday of December. So I was like, oh, I better get over on it. So I've got these little boxes and I had bought these when I had an apartment in California to hold my little uh, small inks, my stamping up inks. And I've had them and I thought to myself, oh, what am I gonna do with those? Because I don't need them to hold my mini inks anymore. I thought, oh, you know what? Let's make a journal to go inside the box. So that's what we're gonna do today. So the box measures I think, what did I say to myself? Like um, like six, six and a quarter by four and a quarter, around that. So I've gone ahead and constructed the outside of the journal. I just used some chipboard here. I measured inside the box, so it has to be smaller than like around four inches in width. Sorry for having that too far up on the top. And it has to be smaller than five, uh, five inches in height. So what I did is I believe my um, top here, and you guys would just measure it. So it's just like at five and three fourths and I have two of those like that and then the width is just under four inches and then I've got for my spine I think I did like three fourths of an inch and I've gone ahead and pulled some papers now I want this journal to be all about Christ so I don't want any um, Santa Clauses on it or anything like that. So I pulled some book pages. This is a German hymn, um, but it's in English, but it says, Jesus Christ is born today. That's my first page. And then these are just some um, colored paper by Inked Paper Art. I believe this is from Triple V Vintage. This is straw paper from Rachel. And then my middle page is uh, from one of the Bibles I have, somewhere from the 1800s. And what I did is I pulled the pages from Matthew uh, when it talks about, I think it's um, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, when it talks about Jesus is born in Bethlehem. So that is going to be my uh, middle page. And then here, this page is just some holly. And then I have, ooh, I'm glad I looked at that. That's upside down. And then this is from um, French Bible. And it is the same verse. Where is it? Where is it? I know I have it. Yes, chapter two about Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Oh boy. And uh, so that's the next page. Then I've just got little green paper there. Boy, I had this all turned around. I'm glad I looked at that. And then this is from my Swedish Bible. And again, Matthew um, chapter two, verse one is there. And then just again, some small little paper here from Inked Paper Art. And because I'm running low on time, I only did, I think it's five sheets, one, two, three, four, five, uh, two signatures, five pages each. And so that will give me 40 pages to uh, for each side, a total of 40 pages to decorate. So that will be more than enough for my 
uh, December daily. And then when I uh, slip them in there and then bring in the box, it fits in nicely in that box and will close. So I think what I'm going to do before I cover it, I was wondering if I should round the edges, but the only thing about rounding those edges, I was gonna put fabric on the outside. And let me show you the fabric that I have. I believe I bought it last year at uh, Michael's when everything was on sale. And it's some deer and some trees. It's got some, like some glitter, you know, iridescent things in it. I don't have any fabric with uh, Christ on um, the front, but I'm going to turn off the camera while I work on that a little bit and try to decide what I'm gonna do with the cover. Um, just, I want to make sure that it fits in the box really nicely. And so I will be back in just a moment with you guys with those decisions. So what I decided to do to, uh, remedy that, um, dilemma is I just took an eighth of an inch off of both sides. And then that way I've got more than enough room for the journal to fit in the little box and I don't have to round the corners. So I've cut my fabric and what I have found is the best way to attach fabric to um, any kind of a surface is use a glue stick because if you use Fabri-Tac, and I will put it on the edge, but if you use Fabri-Tac, then the glue seeps through. So I always just put a little bit of um, glue stick first, and that will hold it in place. And then I will go around with a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac, Oops, I pulled the whole thing out there, uh, around the edge of the journal, you know, the chipboard there, and then that way it will hold it down quite nicely. So I'm just going to put just a little sliver along here. And sometimes... Um, glue stick starts to dry, so after I get this on, I may put a little bit more glue stick on there. Yeah, that's good there. And then I'm gonna just take tiny, tiny bit more glue stick. I wanna put my fingers. <laughs> moving around on me and so what I'm going to do is just flip it over and lay it down there we go and see now that that does not seep through when you have it right here. And I put, I may put a little doily or something on the front of that. But see how nice that is then. And then what you're going to do is take a pair of scissors. I wish I had my fabric scissors here. And you're just gonna come in a little bit. And then out. Snip those corners off. I don't think I did so hot there, but we'll see. I think it needs to adhere a little bit better. And then here, because I'm gonna be putting something over this, it doesn't matter if a little bit of the glue shows through because I'm gonna be covering that. I just want that 
corner to be down there a little bit. And like I said, I'm doing this very, very quick just because I'm so late in getting my my journal done for the for the December daily. Okay, so now I'm gonna run just a little bit of fabric tack along this side here. Just push that in and then I take my my silicone brush and bring it forward. And then the other thing I do is I take my bone folder. Uh, let's see. Yes. <laughs> Where was it? And just crease those in there like that so that it folds up nicely. And I may even put some corner protectors on this if it will allow me to do that and have it fit inside the, the journal or in the box. Now while that dries, I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna put on the inside cover. So I've decided that I want a hidden spine. So I just have two pieces of very vanilla Stamping Up cardstock, and I want them to be a little bit stronger than what they are. And so I've measured them just a skosh in from the spine and a skosh in from the top and bottom, and I'm gonna adhere those two together so that it just gives that area that I'm gonna sew the signatures into a little bit more strength. I probably wrote, don't really have to, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So just a little bit of uh, Beacon 3-in-1 glue there. And then, yeah, that's that's a little bit stronger there. And then I have cut fabric to go on each side of the front and back covers, but I'm going to first attach this with some uh, fabric over it. Yes, so I want this piece to cover this white part. So what I did is I cut I measured here, it's like two and a half inches, and I have cut it to the length. And so now I will glue this, but I'm not gonna turn it over and um, glue the other side to it. So I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit of glue stick here just to hold it in place and then We'll go from there. Okay. 
then that will go in there and it will cover up that white part. Okay, perfect. So the other thing that I decided to do, I saw somebody else do this. These are the little uh, hangers that you use for pictures. I went on Amazon and I got a pack of a hundred, which I will never use. I'm gonna sell a few of them. But they're little uh, D-ring, they're called. Um, picture hangers. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and attach it. Let me get my Tim Holtz one so that I can find the center, my Tim Holtz ruler. So that's, um, it's about center right there. And it's about where that little deer is. I gotta remember that. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down before I go to the other side, just because I can hardly see that. And then I may even run just a strip of some kind of fabric down there. And so then you'll run your ribbon through that little loop and that will be your 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 ring to close it. So let's go to the other side, find our center. I'm gonna add some glue here. I'm using Fabri Tac. And then we'll lay this one here. And I probably will attach something over the top of that. I don't know if the fabric that I picked to go here is going to be big enough. I think it is. Yeah, I'm going to be able to attach that there. And then that will cover that up a little bit. So perfect. Yeah, because I'm going to be putting a pocket here or or something. So let's just go ahead and and glue this fabric down. And again, I'm going to use my my glue stick here. Because on the edges, I will use the fabric tack. We'll just put a little bit on the edge here. You see how that seeps through there? I don't like that because it, sh it stays. So I will probably put some kind of decorative thing there. And then let's do this other side here. And I want these bottom sides to be about the same in distance. Once we put all our signatures in, you're not gonna be able to tell that much difference, but, and I may very likely put a little bit of lace up here if I can fit it in, because it needs to again fit in that box. So there's our, our inside covers done with our closures. Oh yeah, those match up nicely. Very good, very, very good. So I'm gonna have to stop for a little bit because I gotta go pick my son up from work 
and I'm going to make um, dinner for us. I don't know if you guys ever make these. They're, I call them breakfast sandwiches, but they're basically uh, Egg McMuffins. But I cook the egg and I have the Canadian bacon and cheese and, you know, English muffins that we toast. And we have that for dinner sometimes. So I think that's what I'm going to make us for dinner. And then I usually make some hash browns. So I will be back probably tomorrow to finish filming this and we'll go from there. Okay, so now I have gone ahead and um, poked my holes for a three hole pamphlet stitch. And I've also put the holes in my papers. And now I want to sew it onto here. And this is what I use for my um, markings. You just lay your paper in there and then lay this over, and then you're gonna get a really nice hole. Um, it's made in Holland, but uh, there's a place in New York that uh, I ordered it from. And then I just wanted to tell you, it's something different I'm trying. So my friend, Rachel, over at Roxy Creations, that I'm gonna get to meet in May, she does not cut her string. You know, most of the time, I think we've learned to measure it times three. She doesn't do that. And so, cause she says, then you're wasting um, wax threads. So I'm not gonna do that. And we'll see how it turns out for me. So what I'm going to do is, and I think actually even Rachel, came up through the back so the string didn't show. Let's try that and see what happens. So uh, let's see, where do I want it? Okay, so I'm going through this hole and then through this one, okay. and then down through this one and then find the hole here. Sorry, I know you guys can't see that well, but it's, then I'm going down through there. And then I'm gonna go through this one and through here. Okay. Yeah, I do think this is gonna save me some, um, some thread here. I'm gonna pull that kind of taunt. And then I'm gonna go back down through here and oh yeah fantastic so I missed you know you want to make sure that you go through and not um, split your threads okay Cut it and then pull it taunt and secure it. So let me just do that. You want to make sure that your pages are nice and taunt because you don't want to flipping and flopping around. And I don't need to even tuck this that much because it's gonna be glued down. Okay, perfect. Got that correct, okay. Now for the next one. 
Okay, I got the other signature uh, sewn in. And our dinner was great. I love making that for dinner because you always have those ingredients in the refrigerator. Everybody always have eggs and I keep the Canadian bacon for those in the refrigerator or the freezer and pull out a pack as I need it. And then we always have cheese, you know, and of course you always have potatoes to make hash browns. So it's very, very, very easy to make for a dinner. So I'm gonna put glue first just here to apply this hidden spine on top of the spine of the book. I wanna make sure I've got more than enough glue. And I want to center it and I wanna make sure this I remember is the front and I'm gonna just hover over the spine and lay it down and make sure it's, I could go over a little bit more, it's centered. Well, if you hold that fabric up, you can see where you've got it glued down. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay with that. And I'm glad I doubled up that card stock for the, the spine that I uh, sewed the pages to, because that, that's a good thickness for that. Okay, and now that that's down, oh, that's perfect. Then I'm gonna go back to using the glue stick for the fabric. That was kind of coming up there. And I may just put a little bit of the Fabri-Tac around the edges. Oh, I pulled off that thing again. Oh, no, I didn't. I just woke up, actually, so... My eyes are not focusing yet. Oh, shoot, and that's pulling up because I haven't had time to let that down go down. And then I'll do the other side here. But I'll turn the camera off while I'm doing that. And then just as a real quick tip, I always refill my bottles when they're getting low. And then that way they don't have to squeeze so much. But I don't know if you guys know this about your Fabri-Tac and your three-in-one glue. It is acetone based and so that is the reason it is not water-based. That is the reason why it does not warp your paper and it actually gives it strength, but it does get thick. So what I do is after I fill my small bottles up, I take some just regular O acetone that you know nail polish remover and i add it to the bottle this is a little syringe 3 cc syringe which is like a half a teaspoon or so and i add it to the big bottle then shake it up and it thins it up i think that's some of the complaint that people have about the beacons glues is they get too thick but you can thin them out so that's just a little tip there so what I decided to do on this very first page is I have this die cut and it reminds me of 
either Jerusalem or Bethlehem in um, the time period that Christ was born. And this is a old card making trick where the insides, the windows, if you take just a pay, uh, uh, pieces of um, cardstock that is um, like a, a foil sheet, this is gold foil sheets, this is from Stamping Up, and just cut it out and glue it to the back. Then when you turn it over, it looks like illuminating lights from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And I'm gonna put it close to the edge there so that um, that ho helps hold that tie closure thing down. Get over here where these palm trees are. And again, you've heard me say this before, the thing about 3-in-1 and, and uh, Fabri-Tac, because it is acetone, it actually strengthens your projects. So I'm just going to lay this down here, right over that edge there. And that kind of decorates that page a little bit. Then also from that same die set, I have this star. But the other thing I thought is I want to decorate this a little bit. And then I'm going to put this star up there. So let's put some Fabri-Tac on this. Oh, you know what would have been pretty, but it's too late because I've already got the glue on there, is running some ribbon through those holes. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah, that just kind of breaks up that one little edge there. Yeah, that's okay. And then, like I said, it 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 flattens that out so that it will be easy to journal on. And then I'm just going to put that star right up there in the corner. So I believe in my detailed uh, crafting tour video, I talked about this little die cutting machine from Stamping Up. And I again, I just love it because it just sits on my desk and the plates are all there. I don't have to go digging for them or anything like that. The other thing is I showed you this. It was in one of my drawers and I am cutting out a frame. I don't know if this is still available. It's called Fancy Frames Dies. It's a stamping up uh, die. And I ran it through my machine with some gold cardstock. But I'm going to show you what you do with this. So you turn it over onto the opposite side. And then if you just run your brush over the back of it, it it releases all those little bits and pieces. So then all you have to do is, instead of taking out your pokey tool and getting everything out, you just use your brush and it all comes out. So I adhered that down. And then I also put a little bit of lace here. And then I did a video um, sometime where you make your faux, uh, rice paper, but I also cut the frame 
out of that and it has a little bit of a gold. This is from a napkin and I thought that would be pretty in there too. So I'm gonna glue that down. Um, let's see, I think I want, you know, you're always like, oh, which glue should I use? I should actually use fabric glue, but I hope this doesn't go through, but I guess it doesn't really matter just because I'm gonna put a picture of Christ over the top of it. It's mostly to hold this down. Oops. Okay, let's just slide that in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's good. And then I'm going to take this picture of Christ and put that there. And then that is the back of the journal. Oh, that came out really nice. I love that. Yes, that's fantastic. And then I'm just going to pull up some um, seam binding for the closure. Oh, wait, I forgot one more thing I was going to do that I think I want to do. I want to make sure that's not going to. So this is the front of the journal. And I ordered this from... Where did I get it from? AliExpress, last Christmas. And I think I'm gonna put that on there because it will help decorate the spine up a little bit. And you're gonna still see the, the deer. So I'm gonna glue that down where it's really thick. And then I'll be back with you guys and show you the closure. Okay, so that is glued on. And then I also went in with some um, book corners and put them on each corner and close it like that. And then it will be able to go into the box quite nicely. Now, of course, I'm gonna be dec decorating the box up itself. I'm gonna have to be mindful of the inside because if I put too much paper, it's going to impede the room that I have in it. But anyway, that's this video for this Monday. And we will continue on next Monday with decorating the box and some of the pictures inside. So I appreciate you joining me and I will see you guys next Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye.